Right, my name is Gerhard, I'm the drummer from Enhayoch, and I'm list you're listening to a Brutally Delicious Podcast. Oh, that's not the same. Yeah! Oh, hey! Oh, oh, hey. Oh. Well, there. there we go. Hey. <laughs> Should I uh, tilt it to the other If you way, want or? to, it would look yeah, better, yeah. sure. There we go. I How are myself, you, my friend? Okay. Great. Been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's nice to see you guys again. I was looking through some pictures I have from uh, the years of 70,000 tons, and we're always hanging in that little bar right by the uh, the main desk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> always. I miss that place. <laughs> is that the ship and anchor? Is that what that bar is called? I think so. And we're always, you guys are always in that one corner. Every yeah. <laughs> every cruise I've been on, you guys are always sitting in that one corner. It's our bar. <laughs> yeah, even Axel, he he actually knew the bartender. You know. Do you still so keep in contact so with much. him, Axel? Yeah, yeah. Quite I've... often, actually. Yeah, he, we, we all live around here, so I see him from time to time. Oh, that's good. So it's uh, it's not like he's out of the band; he's he's out of our lives. <laughs> right, right. No, I get that. <laughs> not gonna. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you for joining us. I'll jump in on the first one here. What's yeah. been the re, uh, What's been the response to North Star, which I guess came out in February, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it's been really great, actually. I mean, uh, I think it was a great opportunity for us during the pandemic to actually do this. You know, at least we did something, you know. Right. Instead of um, playing live, we managed to release an album. And uh, during the pandemic, I think we had extra time to perfect it. You know what I mean? So, and it's also the everything is done locally. It's like uh, <laughs> right homegrown from start to finish, and that's really uh, uh, something I think is really cool. You know. Well, I was reading the bio, and it looks like you guys recorded it in uh, your singer Frode's house, right? That's right. He has his own studio uh, at his home. So we used that a couple of times now. And it's very convenient for us. It's, uh, I don't think we could record anything any other way right now. Uh, as long as we all have jobs and uh, families and stuff like that, we can't, you know, blow the vacation right. to record somewhere else for like a month or something like that. It's, it's very difficult. So it's very practical to do it at home. What and then we so can what do is it. it you know. you do, what is it that you do as a day job then? Uh, me? Yeah. Uh, well, we have different jobs, but I work at the big shop, you know, that sells stuff. Um, what do you call it? Wholesale infrastructure stuff for electricians, right. industry, offshore stuff like that. Were so you able been, to work uh, during the pandemic or were you were closed? Yes, apparently I'm super important. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I worked all the time. So uh, we needed to keep open. Right. But it was, uh, you know, it was uh, a strange, at least in the begin beginning of the pandemic, there was like no people on the roads, no customers, uh, stuff like that. So, but we had to keep open in any regard. Gotcha. So are you guys doing any festivals this summer? Yeah, a few. Uh, most of them are actually uh, stuff that was booked in 2020, you know. Yeah. So we don't have anything new. We already been. Uh, we, we, uh, earlier this year, we had a little run through Norway, like the biggest cities here. Uh, just a small tour. And uh, a few weeks back, we uh, were in France for Hellfest, which was right, insane. That. Yeah. Uh, that, so that, was, that looked that like was people were waiting their whole entire life. I saw some <laughs> yeah, of the videos yeah. and Hellfest looked like everyone there was like, we'd never seen anything like this before. And we're letting it all roll. Yeah. It was a lot of people, you know, no, no matter where you went, it was packed. You know, it's like, it also looked like there the was place. a lot of nudity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I saw nudity. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I saw nudity. <laughs> yeah, I did. Chris, don't be like, such a prude. First hand. <laughs> what? Yeah, but uh, you know, oh, nudity yeah. there's like a 40 degrees. So I don't blame them. 
Wait a yeah. second. What's 40 degrees? 40 degrees is cold. It's in, hot in as shit. Time. It's like 101 Fahrenheit. Oh, uh, Celsius. Yeah, Celsius, degrees, Celsius is all kinds of wrong. No, Bruce, got it. <laughs> well, 40 Celsius is all kinds of wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I guess when you're up on stage, right, that's got to suck. Uh, well, actually, that was the best place because we had huge fans. Could you imagine being the dude that's be- like in the front in the 101 degrees or whatever, 40 yeah. degrees, and all those imagine. people pushed against you all day long? <laughs> yeah, that was must have been a nightmare. We wow. we played in a tent, so it was actually maybe the best place to be uh, yeah. at the time. But uh, still, it was... Uh, what was the energy like? It was surprisingly good. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. So uh, we got a great response from the audience. And uh, yeah, and also... <clears throat> We managed to see some of the other bands late, uh, later that day. We played early. Right. And uh, I can't understand how people kept up with all this, you know, uh, hours and hours. You know, it was insane. All right. So I got a question, and it really has nothing to do with, uh, with the band. But that guy that's sitting in the front row with all those people pushing, and he's been there all day, where does he go when he's got to take a leak? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe right where he stands. I mean, do you just? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious because, like, like I'm just peeing on the guy next to me. Where does that go? Well, you know, it, it's smart. Right. He brought a bottle for that purpose. You know. If well, you know what? Though, here's day, what I'll say: If it's 40 degrees ahead. Celsius, if it's 40 degrees Celsius, he probably doesn't have to pee because he's just True. sweating it all out. Yeah, True. but is the drinking extra much? You know, so. Um... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and if he's drinking Sorry. beer, that's a dehydrant, so he's gonna pee more and just be more dehydrated. I'm worried for that guy now. The mom in me is like, you know, <laughs> now <laughs> I things to say I... now to this um, imaginary guy. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know uh, where. Uh, you know, I've seen the meme. You know, you see that huge crowd with like tens of thousands of people and this talking bubble. I need to pee. You know. Yeah. <laughs> But you know you're never going to get your spot back, so you got to stay, right? Because you've waited all night. Yeah, probably. It depends on how um, pointy elbows you have, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. You get on through. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like? Because um, you guys, I, you said you all have day jobs, but you would always do like an album tour, album tour, album tour, album tour, album tour. Uh, so what was it like when suddenly you just had to make an album and there was no rush to tour. It was strange. I mean, I, I think it's the same for all bands. Like this two years have just be, been some kind of twilight zone, you know. Uh, some place you go, or purgatory, some place you go uh, and wait for two years until you get someplace better, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it was a bit strange. Uh, but it's not completely correct that we have tours um, all the time because uh, it's a long time since we've been on an actual European tour uh, but a lot of festivals and uh, yeah. like uh, promotion for the album and stuff like that yeah it was a bit um, I don't know if you use this uh, over there but amputated uh, the okay. whole thing uh, you know you release an album and you're really happy with it and uh, blah you know yeah you can't do anything about it. So, yeah. And you have to wait two years. So the festivals we're doing now is sort of the promotion for the album. You right. know. Nice. Did you get any cancellations on the gigs that you had booked at the pandemic times? Because, like, you know, shit got really bad. Uh, may- maybe a couple. Uh, but I think most of the stuff. Like, you know, the festivals being canceled. Uh, excuse me. I didn't hear the last bit. Uh, no worries, babe. It was nothing. Her, <laughs> no, her okay. internet, like, her <laughs> internet cut out. She was like, "Did you fill in any cancellations?" Or did you cancel uh, we didn't nothing? get many cancellations, uh, really. Uh, we have mostly the stuff that um, it's a couple of small festivals that uh, you know went out the window, but uh, most of the stuff we still have. So that's cool. And yeah, as, you know, it's it's cool that most festivals try to maintain the same lineup as originally planned. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just can't even imagine being a festival organizer 
during this time. <laughs> like, no. holy crap. It must be a nightmare. A total nightmare. Yeah. So, what, yeah. Um, are you guys working on new material since you had all this time? Did you guys have enough material for another record already? Or how does that work out? No, not really. Uh, It's like when when we uh, cook food, we only cook just enough for that meal. And the same with music, you know, we right. create exactly enough for that album. And uh, if one song doesn't turn out the way we want it to be, then, you know, it's one album short or one song short on that album, you know. We don't really uh, make a lot of stuff extra for, you know. Okay. We don't have 15 songs and we choose the 10 best because it's like we're a little bit like completionists. Mm -hmm. So if we sit there then with five songs extra, we don't know what to do with them and uh, we don't want to throw them away, but we're already tired of them for the next album. Right. You know what I mean? So we just make just exactly what we, what we need. Yeah. Gotcha. So definitely not like Red Hot Chili Peppers, <clears throat> who will make 60 songs and then make a double or triple album that makes you wonder, what was the crap like that you left out? Because <laughs> they exactly. always say that yeah. we made this huge catalog of stuff and then like, you know, took out the two or three albums best of it. It was like, what? <laughs> you, know, you barely have an EP here. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's also what kind of threshold do you have? what is acceptable <laughs> yeah. i mean uh when you create a song it's like yeah uh, okay this song is perfect and you have like 30 other songs which is it's good enough you know and that's not good enough for us that it's you know it's it must fit in perfectly you know in the album so do you find it difficult knowing when to when to say a song is done or when to walk away and put it away? Or are you always saying, I want to add something else or I want to do something else? It, yeah, it's a bit difficult. I mean, uh, it's finished when the album uh, or the album is out or the, the or files the and the mix has been sent to mixing or mastering or whatever. Right. It, then it's finished, you know, so we that's the positive stuff about uh, having a studio here at home that we can, you know, the day before we send it away, we can still change stuff and um, yeah, do whatever we want. And we can sort of really push the limits a little bit, you know, the time limits. Mm -hmm. Usually we have a deadline, but you know, day or two, it doesn't matter. Right. We can, uh, we can change something last minute if we want to. And that's great. All right. Yes. Yeah. I actually have one question. Yeah. You guys are a fairly popular metal act, right? Like when you play metal festivals, people sing along, they know your tracks, they know they know you. It's like it's fun. Yeah. Um, what's it like when you're like say you play Hellfest or you play the pool deck stage on seventy thousand tons of metal, and then you go back to work? How do you reconcile those two things <laughs> in your head? That's just a question I've always wanted to know, you know, because a lot of people think, you know, musicians play huge stages. They're set up for life, but they're actually just working class people. Yeah. I mean, they're not set up for life. I can assure yeah. you that, but, uh, yeah. you know, you, you get that, uh, what do you call it again? Post festival, uh, trauma. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you get back from, uh, like the cruise, for example, We've been there five days. Uh, it's just like beer and heavy metal and uh, great people for five yeah. days. And then you come back. It takes some adjustment. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it's very strange because many normal people also have the same question that they have you know, the, it's not rooted in reality what they think we actually make on yeah, concerts yeah. and stuff like that. They think, uh, <laughs> well, why are we working here? Right. Play for like 50,000 people at Hellfest, you know, stuff yeah. like that. Right. And then you're in the warehouse on Monday morning. Exactly. So uh, they, they think, uh, you know, even though we play at the festival with 50,000 people, it's not like we're the headliner, you know, we're not yeah. Iron Maiden. So, uh, yeah, 
And does it ever freak your coworkers out when you're like, look at me, I'm wasted on stage right here. And you're like, <laughs> up there, and you're like, the crowds in the background well, losing their mind. My coworkers are used to me, so uh, <laughs> they don't get surprised by that stuff. But uh, <laughs> many people are actually. But uh, they think it's great. You know, what the, well, I'm what, about to swear. But you can swear. Right. You can yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Uh, on the stage with tens of thousands of people. And then I come back uh, on Monday to work, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. All around, I think that's got to be weird. Well, I just think yeah. it's something that the veil needs to be pulled back on a little bit, you know? So people understand that musicians are working class people as well. You exactly. know, like they're blue collar workers. Like, like if, if you're in a metal band and you want to make a living from metal, you have to be on the road you know at least 250 days a year exactly and it's not enough uh, the way we are doing it we uh, just use the vacations you know stuff yeah. like that so that's not enough at all yeah absolutely so uh but i, I it's a hobby i guess that's yeah. what it turned out uh, and uh, I, we I enjoy it that, i mean i like, can it's it's more than a hobby it's it's a way of life because like a hobby is something you go do when you you have nothing better to do like i'll just fool around with my stamps or whatever or like make this wooden whatever you know that's yeah. a hobby but this <laughs> takes like much much more commitment like uh like i also have a band and when when we had something going on back in the day and and did like a lot of gigs at least i had a really really true metal job to go back to because i was working in a funeral office <laughs> so oh, that's really? where i would go <laughs> that's where i would go back to on monday but still i want to go back to the whole like it's more than a hobby it's not just a hobby and and this is the like reality of it it is yeah. your job it is your identity and then your money just comes from elsewhere you know exactly i mean yeah it was a wrong choice of words it's not just a hobby i agree it's uh we wouldn't uh, travel you know to china to play 45 minutes if it was just a hobby you right. know right it's it's a lot more than that but uh it's a passion you know, it's lifestyle. So we've, yeah. we've been doing this for like, yeah, I don't know, since 93. So it's a long time, almost 30 years. So, you know, you don't collect stamps for, the, uh, you know, uh, that's how, as you said, that's a hobby. I have a lot of stamps, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> <laughs> They're cool. They're really cool. I yeah, love the cool. fact that this interview okay. is happening with a huge glass of beer. I love it. Yes. Yeah, I'm so jealous of that yeah. beer. I'm here like, why did I, I give know. myself any? Well, I'm, I'm talking on the phone without beer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't have anything else, Chris, Rena. I, I don't. I really appreciate you talking with us today and being so open and honest about the band. The new, so yeah. the new record sounds great, by the way. Yes. Thank you. Where can people find it if they want to buy it? I think they can find it in any record shop. Okay. Really? Yeah if they don't if it's not available uh, it's on napalm records you know they have uh, in america it's available and in europe it's available so in any case people can get it from napalm records napalm has a small reach just a, yeah, tiny, just a little bit just a tiny reach. just a tiny yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i am hoping that like in just the next germany yeah i'm hoping yeah. that in the next six months we're sitting in that fucking bar tossing back a beer yeah, we've already cleaned our calendar. Me too. Uh, <laughs> all of us. So, and we we we've made contact. <laughs> so and now uh, we're all just waiting. Know, two steps. Uh, so yeah, we're just waiting. Really, we're uh, well, <laughs> we're ready. So I'll the first there. the first round is on you, though. All right. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Depend. <laughs> I'll buy a round. I'll buy yeah. a round. Yeah, just I'll to be there, I'll buy a round. I'll go get one of those buckets. How many people are in the band? Five, four, four now, right? Uh, yes, yeah, five with the sound guy, so Tom. So, okay, uh, so I need two buckets of beer. All right, I can make that happen. And I'll hold your cool. spot in that little bar next to the uh, front desk there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, <All right. laughs> anybody comes serving us gin tonics, yeah, without asking, you know. So, <laughs> you guys literally, I think when you weren't on stage, you literally were there the whole time. Yeah. Every time I, I walk remember. by, you guys are sitting there. Yeah, I can't remember seeing any bands either, actually. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I 
I feel so fucking left out, guys. Sorry, so incredibly sorry. left you out. You have to go on the cruise, Rena. It's a mandatory thing. I know, thing. I know is, but now the state went like they went all Gilead. I can't go there. Like they got rid of Trump and somehow they made it worse. Uh, oh, yeah. here, yeah. After, like, yeah, but it's not America. Possible? You just have to but, go buy you know, America. Don't really want yeah. to. America is a pass through. Yeah. Otherwise, it's on international waters. It is. So true, true. But I, I, I suppose I would have to fly to America. And... Yeah, just to Miami, touchdown, get on the boat, and then it's all whatever. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Join all us right. at the we'll bar by the uh, we'll lobby. Talk. I don't know where it stops this year, but or next year, but I don't yeah, think anyone knows. Seen, yeah, I no. haven't made too much announcements. Thank you so much, my friend. It's great to see you again. You too, man. And I hope the next time I we see you, you it's on board. Well. All right. <laughs> Lovely yeah, talking well, uh, to you. If all goes well, we'll see uh, you guys on board. Right on. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers. We'll talk to you Cheers. soon. All right, bye. 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 Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effie Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. <laughs>